Good morning, everybody. Our essential oil for today is pink pepper. And Stephanie did a great job talking about that last night in our Zoom class about oil, the new oils and the science that was revealed to us at convention. But it is the next oil for us to go over. So we're going to be talking about it. So that's a plus for those of you that weren't able to join us on the class last night. So here's the pink pepper. This is technically not a brand new oil because we were able to get it in May with the Mother's Day Harmony collection, which was designed for building personal fragrance. Speaking of which, if you'd be interested in a personal fragrance class where you make your own roller bottle and then use it as perfume, drop a one in the comments, okay? So pink pepper smells spicy to me, even though it's not in the pepper family like black pepper. I do smell a hint of black pepper in there. It smells kind of fruity as well. It's actually related to the cashews. So let's talk about it. It's a five milliliter and retail is $29.33. Wholesale is $22. So your membership's going to save you seven bucks. Plus, if you're on the LRP, you're going to get points when you order it. So yay for that. And this oil is safe to use all three ways aromatically topically and internally and one of the great things about it is if you're out of pepper you can use pink pepper to season your food and that will save you if you are out of pink pepper so bonus there so it is steam distilled from the fruit of the pink pepper tree. I'm not going to even try to attempt the Latin name because I would butcher it. Um, I posted the source to you video on the sourcing of the pink pepper. It's pretty cool that um, we're able to get the benefits, the health benefits of something that is kind of um, just so common in Peru and Kenya and almost considered a nuisance. So, plus it's benefiting those people. And that is really important that the, the profits are spread out over the whole system. That is different. doTERRA is different in that regard. There are a lot of unscrupulous oil companies out there. So what makes pink pepper valuable to us is its chemical makeup. It is up to 80% monoterpenes, alpha philandrine and beta philandrine and limonene are some of the main constituents. Blue tansy is another oil that is high in alpha philandrine, but it only has um, 5.7% alpha philandrine. Pink pepper has between 15 and 30% alpha philandrine. So, well, you're probably saying, what is alpha philandrine good for? It is very good for your internal system. Actually, systems. Your gastrointestinal system. Your liver your cardiovascular system, uh, your kidney, and actually all the way down to the cellular level. So the properties of pink pepper, it is antibacterial, antifungal, antimicrobial, anti-inflammatory, anti-tumor, anti-spasmodic, and astringent, a diuretic, a digestive stimulant and wound healing. And there has been some scientific research done on it um, regarding its antibacterial property. It was found to demonstrate antibacterial activity against several strains. Hi, Dan, thank you for joining me. 
several strains of gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria. That's huge in our world of bacteria that is um, super strains that doesn't respond to medications anymore. Cancer. Pink pepper was found to inhibit leukemia and breast cancer cell lines in laboratory tests. And insects. Pink pepper was found to be insecticidal and repellent to several varieties of beetles and fleas. So that's some good information to know. So how are you going to use pink pepper and what might you use it for? Well, here are some ideas. First of all, I want to say that, that this essential oil is a little bit uh, unique in that it, it has a boosting effect, similar to frankincense, because whenever you pair an oil with frankincense, we, we have said that frankincense is a driver and it will push it deeper in. So pink pepper works synergistically with several other oils and increases the benefit. So that's why most of the things that I'm going to tell you now are telling you to pair pink pepper with another oil. So that's the reason why. So for cleansing your body from candida or just cleansing your lymph system, you're going to combine with frankincense and take one to two drops two times a day. And you can just put that in your water, or if you don't like the taste of it, you can build a veggie capsule and take it that way. For Crohn's disease, nausea, vomiting, gas, bloating, poor appetite. That kind of covers the gamut of the um, gastrointestinal system. You're going to combine it with cardamom, and you're going to apply it topically to the areas of concern and take one to two drops internally multiple times a day. So I would say at least three times a day. Take it with your meals. If you have pain medication addiction or you know someone who is struggling with pain medication addiction, pink pepper and some other oils can help with that. So you're going to combine it with copaiba and black pepper and take one to two drops internally twice a day. For gout and rheumatism and arthritis, you're going to combine with frankincense and copaiba and apply topically to the area of concern and also take it internally. So your frankincense is actually going to address the area of inflammation. So arthritis is inflammation of the tissue and that's why it hurts because it's inflamed. The frankincense will address the inflammation. The copaiba addresses the nervous system because when we experience pain, that pain response makes our nerves activate. So copaiba calms that down and the pink pepper is going to work synergistically with those two oils and make them work even better. PMS, cramps, menstrual pain, and breath breast health. You're going to apply topically to the areas of concern. Also the reflexology points and if you don't have a reflexology chart drop a comment in there and we can post one for you to use. And you're going to combine that with marjoram and geranium. For respiratory issues and bronchitis you're going to apply to your chest and your back over your lung area and you're going to take one to two drops internally and you're also going to diffuse it with melaleuca. Now when you diffuse, you don't necessarily want to hold your nose over the diffuser and breathe it in. You just want to be in the room with that in your atmosphere. For depression and anxiety, diffuse with green mandarin, lavender or Roman chamomile and apply over the heart. For infection, fever, and to promote perspiration, you're going to take it internally 
or apply topically with Melaleuca. Dilute as needed if you have sensitive skin. Um, I should always say that, but it kind of goes without saying. I don't have sensitive skin, but a lot of people do. So, and when you're trying out a new oil, you should dilute first anyway, just to make sure that you don't have a sensitivity to it because you don't know until you try it. For months, muscle tension, cramps, and pain, apply topically with marjoram every hour to the concerned area until you feel relief. For fatigue and lack of alertness, you're going to diffuse. You can put a drop in your hands and just do it that way and apply to your chest and the bottoms of your feet. For an insect repellent, you can mix it with some water. and you're, So you get a little spray bottle and put five, ten drops in it. Then shake it first and spray, and that's going to be an insecticidal for you. You can also apply it topically for an insecticidal. For metabolic syndrome, obesity, blood sugar, and cholesterol, you're going to take twice daily internally and combine it with grapefruit and clove and also diffuse it with grapefruit and clove. And for poor circulation, you're going to take internally and apply topically combined with clove. Now clove is a warm oil, so you definitely want to dilute if you're going to be putting that on your skin. And for flavoring, as I mentioned at the beginning, you can dip a toothpick into the oil and then use that as flavoring, stir that into your pot. Um, one thing that I said said it was especially tasty with meats and sauces, so just Think about that, and it, the only other thing I would say about it is that uh, it's probably good to not use this at bedtime because it does have some stimulating characteristics, so probably not one to diffuse at night to help you sleep. But that's about all I have to say about pink pepper today. If you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment or message me. Y'all have a great day. Bye.